Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Mythic Conversations. That's right, it's Wednesday night, 7.30 Eastern Time. That's what it's time to do, time for Mythic Conversations, right? Thank you to everyone who is joining me live. Um, and for those who can't join live, I get it. All those who are checking this out on replay, seriously, thanks to you as well. Drew, nice to have you here. Uh, like every week, been looking forward to this all day. Very excited for what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm going to talk about all of the incredible things that have been available from all of these 3D printing companies tonight. Got a lot of stuff to look at um, and some thoughts. But before we do that, before we get into the topic at hand, like every week, let's kick off the show. So this is Mythic Conversations. Welcome. If you are tuning in for the first time and you don't know who I am, my name is Jeremy Gerard. I'm a Mythic Legions collector and customizer. I also have the distinct privilege of working as the digital marketing manager for Four Horsemen Studios. That means that everything you see at SourceHorseman.com is content that I help bring to you. Um, Certainly check that out if you're into Mythic Legions, if you're into Four Horsemen Studios, and if you want to see more of my work, including a lot of the things we're going to look at tonight, you can check me out on Instagram. My, my uh, account there is at Mythic Customs, all one word. Um, you can also check out my website, www.mythiccustoms.com. Again, all one word. Um, on my website, I show photos of all of my work. I show lots of recipes, how I built things. So if this show, if the things that I'm, I'm showing to you and I'm talking about inspire you and you want to create some of your own, that's a great resource. That's why I put it out there. So you can get those recipes. You can create some of these for yourself. Um, and obviously, I'm here on YouTube. My, my channel here on YouTube, also Mythic Customs. Um, this is where every Wednesday night we do Mythic Conversations, the weekly Mythic Legion show. Um, I also post a lot of short tutorial videos, information about different customizing topics. I shot one earlier today about some painting, frequently asked questions I get. So if you're new to customizing, if you're new to Mythic Legions, I think a lot of those uh, tutorial videos will hopefully be helpful as well. So the format of the evening, like every week, we're going to start with some Mythic Legions news. I actually have a number of things to talk about tonight for that, that piece. Um, then we get to the topic at hand. I mentioned at the, the top of the show, tonight we're going to talk about 3D printing and all of the amazing things that these companies are giving us. Um, if you've been around, if you've been watching my show for a while, you may think, hey, you, you covered that before, didn't you? I mean, I kind of did. Actually, very early on in the original Mythic Conversations, when I used to run this live on Facebook in the Mythic Legion's Cabal, I actually did a two-part episode all about adding heads to Mythic Legion's figures. I mean, the first part was about using other toy lines. The second part was... Um, What's that, Drew? What's the figure in front of the Kitson? Shh. That's a secret. So I'm going to take those away right now. You got a good eye there, Drew. So that's a little mistake. Um, I didn't realize you'd be able to see those on camera. But... Drew, that is something that is on the way very, very soon. <laughs> so as I was saying before that absolutely embarrassing incident where Drew pointed out that there was something right there that everyone could actually see, um, I'm not going to reply to that, Drew. I'm not going to reply to what you're asking me there. Um, I will say that what I just hid <laughs> is something that you will all be seeing very, very soon. Um, I'm going to do a whole show, a whole show about that, um, and you will be seeing those very, very soon. And ironically, it's actually kind of in line with the topic we are going to talk about. So, what you just saw there were some upcoming pieces from Wolf King Customs. Those are some of the pieces that I've been teasing, where when people have been asking if they are going to have a shot at the, the Kitsune 
parts again. And I said, yes, they will be back and they're going to have some buddies with them, some friends. Um, you just got a little sneak peek at one of their friends. But anyway, trying to get back on track here, trying to get back to this show. Um, what I was saying was I did a two-part episode about adding heads to Mythic Regions figures. Uh, the second part of that covered all of the three printing companies, and I did detail some different ones. But even though that was a few months ago, so much has changed since then. The, the, the market for these parts has expanded. There's a lot of new uh, players that are in the space, and I, I've been seeing a lot of new people talking about parts, either selling them or just showing that they're working on them. And some of the, the tried and true companies are, are even adding new kinds of parts, things we've never seen before. So it really felt to me that it was worth having that conversation again. Um, Drew, you don't have to apologize at all. Seriously, totally cool. Um, you'll, like I said, you'll see them all very, very soon. Uh, so that's going to be the topic. We're going to talk about 3D printing. I got a bunch of cool stuff to show you, give you some of my thoughts on it. And it's going to be a very honest look. You know, uh, I think a lot of people, I, I respect the fact that people trust my opinions. They trust what I have to say. Uh, you know, I definitely have some thoughts on some of these pieces, some of the different companies that are putting out stuff, um, good and bad. So I'm going to tell you kind of what my thoughts are about these things so you can make some decisions because we are at the point now where there's so much coming out that we, it's an embarrassment of riches. You know, we have so much to choose from, but we likely can't buy it all. So if you do have to pick and choose, hopefully maybe some of my guidance will help you make those decisions. Um, and besides that, there is some back and forth. I mean, you just saw some back and forth as Drew called me out on having something right behind me in the case that was clearly on camera that I didn't realize. So there's going to be that part as well. Walter, nice to have you here. Very, I got some of your stuff to show, both some of the work that you've done for a Wolf King Customs, and I have some of the pieces you put up on Shapeways. Um, so it's relevant to the conversation tonight. But putting that aside, before we get there, let's talk news, Mythic Legion's news. Um, probably the coolest thing is if you've been following Four Horsemen Studios on social media, like on Instagram, uh, they've been showing some fine cuts of the Erethair series. So they showed the Erethair fine cuts, and this is part of the production process. They showed the fine cuts for Erethair uh, a few weeks ago, actually. And then last week, I believe they showed uh, Hadriana, the female knight that has the flip down visor with like the cat face. Um, and then today they showed the heads from the Hellfire Goblin and the little blue goblin Malifair. Um, and like a lot of people pointed out in that photo, if you if you look carefully, um, and I wonder if it was intentional for them or if it was accidental, like with me, or maybe that was intentional with me. Who knows? Uh, if you noticed in that photo, there's actually a head there that looks new. Um, I won't confirm whether or not it is, but it certainly looks new. So a lot of people are already jumping on that. I've seen people circling it and saying, what is that? What is that? Um, so very cool, but definitely exciting to see the fine cuts coming in from the factory. Um, it's just proof that things are moving along. Uh, we're all getting back to normal. Business starting to happen again. Um, before we know it, we're going to have those Erethair figures in our hand. Super excited for that. See if we have anything going on here. Yeah, everyone just cracking up about my little snafu there. <laughs> um other stuff going on. So actually, the other news is with the 3D printing companies, some of which we're going to talk about today. Um, obviously, My Action Figure Customs, they're going to be coming out with an ogre sale pretty soon, apparently. Um, they've been showing some absolutely insane like shoulder pads for an ogre. One of them has like a rhino skull. One of them has a like elephant skull. Um, I mean, they're huge. I cannot even imagine displaying them. It looks like they would fill the size of a Detolf case. They, they are so wide. Um, I also can't imagine how expensive those things are going to be considering that when they did that two headed torso recently, that two headed torso, just the torso was $75 because it was such a large piece. Um, 
I'm just looking at the size of those pauldrons and I have to imagine that they're going to be, they're going to be pretty pricey, but it's cool. I mean, they're like premium pieces. If you really want to enhance a figure with something totally unique, uh, looks like they're doing something really, really cool there. They're going after that. And those were sculpted by Kevin, um, Jim Panson creations, love his work. So very, very cool. They, so they're going to be doing that. They announced that uh, the next sale is going to be all, ogres and then i guess they're going to be doing stuff with goblins and dwarves so um fans of my action figure customs look like they have some cool stuff to look forward to um wolf king customs also has a sale coming up this saturday my friend lens company um obviously you know i'm you know very excited about wolf king customs they are the ones that put out my my kitsune heads which we're going to talk about tonight um i've been fortunate enough that Len's been sending me pieces to paint uh, in advance of the sale so I can take some photos uh, to send him so he can use on his website. Um, it's great. I get to see the pieces early. I get pieces for myself. So it's a lot of fun. It's kind of a win-win there. Um, actually, right before this show, I finished painting a piece that he liked how it came out so much that he decided that he wants me to be able to show it tomorrow. I mean, it was supposed to be a secret for his coming Saturday sale. He wasn't going to reveal it until Saturday. But when I actually sent him the pictures, he was like, that looks great. And I said, hey, I'd really love to show this early to get people excited for your sale. I think it'll help you. Um, so he said, yeah, no problem. Share it. So I'm going to share that tomorrow, but it's it's definitely a piece that a lot of people have asked for. You're going to be very, very excited about that. Um, I will say this, if you do not have any extra Vampire Knight figures from uh, the Advent of Decay Wave, pick an extra one up. You're going to want it for this head. Um, but very cool, obviously. So Wolf King's got a sale coming up on Saturday. Uh, you know, we got some of the stuff we're going to look at today. Um, obviously, the big piece, if you checked out my my Instagram account, I showed this absolute beast. Um, this ogre head was sculpted by Emil Wickman. Emil is a absolutely wonderful artist from uh, Sweden. Uh, and he's actually just a super, super cool guy. Really, really talented dude. I actually just interviewed him for SourceHorseman.com. Um, and outside of his sculpting and customizing, even just some of his other artwork, absolutely incredible. Such a creative dude. Um, he sculpted this head. He's going to be working with Wolf King Customs doing different sculptures. And this is the first piece that he's going to be offering there. Um, and then he's, you know, Wolf King's got some other stuff coming up on Saturday, some ogre scale pieces, and then some, some pieces that aren't ogre scale. So that's in the news as well. Very, very cool. Um, Legion's cast dropped a new episode today. If you're not checking out Legion's cast, absolutely. I mean, you don't know what you're missing. It's a really, really fun show. Uh, Another cool thing that I'll let you know, let you in on. Um, I actually shipped them some stuff recently to use as giveaways. So uh, the Kitsune pieces, I sent them some Kitsune stuff uh, to use as giveaways, as well as some other stuff. So um, if you like free things, if you like to hear people talk about Mythic Legions, in addition to my conversations here on Wednesday night, check out Legions Cast. A lot of good stuff there as well. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is, uh, I don't know, if, like, just, again, this is a Mythic Legion show, but it's also just a toy collecting show. Um, so one of the things that a lot of you have probably seen recently on Facebook is this toy challenge that a lot of people were doing. So I was nominated by Travis from Legion's cast. He, and, and basically what it was, was 10 days of posting 10 different toys or toy lines or whatever uh, that helped shape your childhood, right? And you're supposed to just post a photo, no commentary, no, no nothing. And then you just nominate someone else to do it. Um, so I hate these things normally. I don't like getting nominated for stuff. And the only thing I hate getting, the only thing I hate more than being nominated is having to nominate others. I cannot stand it. Um, I did try to nominate people when I did it because it was fun. Okay. It was genuinely fun because it, it kind of brought me down memory lane. I got to think about a lot of figures that I hadn't thought about in years. Um, and even seeing a lot of my friends post their P 
pieces as well. When when Cornboy posted his, he posted one called Monster Maker, which was these like plastic tiles that you would you'd line up, you know, you choose different heads and different bodies. You'd make these little plastic tiles into a character and they were raised. And then you'd put a piece of paper over it and you'd rub a crayon on it and it would, you know, draw that you know that they would transfer that character onto the piece of paper and it it allowed you to create different combinations i mean it was it was fun it was just something i enjoyed as a kid obviously a, you know an older toy um but i hadn't thought about that thing in uh, I'm like, i don't know 40 years um so seeing it was absolutely incredible again it was really really fun brought back a lot of memories um so the my point is the challenge was a lot of fun despite the fact that i hated having to nominate people. Thank you to everyone who I did nominate who took up the challenge. Thank you to everyone I nominated who didn't take it up or who was like, what the heck? Why is Jeremy nominating me? I'm very sorry. Um, but I started an additional challenge yesterday, which I think is a lot of fun too. I thought, you know, as a collector, you know, I had all these toy lines that shaped my childhood. But then as a collector, there's other toy lines that have shaped my collecting life. Like, for instance, when I did my 10 toys that shaped my childhood, Spawn, McFarlane Spawn was not in that list because when I got into Spawn, I wasn't a kid anymore. That was, Spawn was really the first big line. It was the first line that made me a collector. So it's a huge part of my collecting background but it had nothing to do with my childhood. And I was, I, I wanted to be able to focus on some of those lines that mattered to me from a collecting standpoint, but not from a childhood standpoint. So I started a new challenge, toy collector challenge. Um, and basically same thing, 10 days, post 10 toys or toy lines that have shaped your collecting life. But I changed around some of the rules to do what I wanted to do. Um, the things I didn't like about the first toy challenge was that you couldn't talk about them. Clearly, I like to talk about toys. I do it for an hour and a half every Wednesday night. And I don't shut up. I rattle for an hour and a half. Like there's a lot of podcasts and a lot of video casts that have multiple people talking. This is all me. It is literally me talking at you for 90 minutes every Wednesday. Clearly, I like to talk toys. I don't shut up. So I didn't like the fact that I couldn't talk about the toys I was posting. So that, that rule's out. You can talk about the toy if you want to. The second rule that's out is nominating people. That's garbage. I don't want to nominate people. So what I said in when I posted my first, my toy collector challenge was, forget about nominating. Don't wait for someone to nominate you to do this. If you think this is cool, if you want to do it, just do it. Take it upon yourself. Start doing it. And a number of people have done that. A number of people have thanked me and tagged me and said, Jeremy, thank you for starting this. I'm going to do it as well. And I think it's really, really fun. So um, stuff like that, I mean, especially with everything going on in the world, not to minimize any of that, all of that is incredibly important. Um, but it's nice to see some of that in my feed as well. Um, you know, nice to see these toys. Nice to go down memory lane. Nice to, you know, connect with other people and be able to say, I remember that when I was a kid and and, and have those, those memories. So um, if you're on Facebook, check that stuff out. I'm sure you're seeing a lot of your collector friends do it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. So let's see here, check out some comments. Uh, Joe saying that ogre head makes me so happy. Yeah, Joe, when I got when I get that head, I mean, I had seen the renders of it first, um, but when I got it actually in hand, it was it, it's an absolutely great piece. It's a joy to paint. I actually tend to not like um, a lot of sculptures that have open mouths. Um, they're harder to paint, first off. I mean, there's, when you have all that teeth and the tongue and everything, they are a lot harder to paint. Um, but even like we're going to talk about later some of the different um, 3D companies. We're going to talk about Planetary Dog Toys. Planetary Dog, um, Seba and Julie, they, they do a lot of characters that come with multiple expressions, open and closed mouth. I always pick the closed mouth ones, um, in part because they fit with Mythic Legions. If you notice, Mythic Legions, none of the figures have open mouths. They're not screaming or anything. They're not locked in that moment in time. Um, and they're easy to paint. So that's the ones that I tend to go. I've said this before. I tend to take the path of least resistance. Um, this figure, however, 
that expression is so good. It is so angry. And it was an absolute joy to paint. Um, again, that'll be available Saturday. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that because they're going to be both painted and unpainted versions. I mean, I'm involved doing the painted one. So I'll talk about that towards the end of the show. Yeah, Amy's saying, I have zero friends who collect. That's why I'm in 30-something different toy groups. It's So I'll go off on a little tangent here. Um, I agree with you, Amy. I don't have friends locally who really collect. Um, I, there's actually, that's actually not totally true. There's a few people I work with that do collect. Um, one of them's a big Transformers guy. And I, I love talking to them just about collecting. Um, I don't really have anyone that collects Mythic Legions. Uh, and I hadn't had anybody for a very, very long time that was close by in my life that I shared this hobby with. Like when I do hear the Legions cast guys talk, I'm, I'm envious. I'm envious that they have not only those three knuckleheads that, that are friends, but they've also got, you know, a crew of people in their area that they share this hobby with. I, I don't have that. Um, that's one of the things that I've absolutely been so so happy with so touched by with the mythic legions community the fact that it is so welcoming that i can share this with people that i have made genuine friends not a day goes by that i don't talk to len that i don't talk to walter hagen from the cabal um i talk to dennis derby in nikki i talk to eric lebron i talk to steve sykes i mean everybody i talk to anthony Husiel, um houseel Oh, darn it, messed it up. Anthony Houseel. Um, all these people I talk to constantly. Um, in addition to getting to talk to you all here on Wednesday night. So I agree with you. I actually just joined my second toy group. Um, oh, I, I'm in a number of Mythic Legions groups, but I'm a lurker in most of them. And, and the reason for that is nothing bugs me more than when I see someone post the same exact thing in like three or four mythic legions groups all of which i'm in so it shows up on my feed one after another um i just think that's poor like etiquette i don't like seeing that i think it's overdone share content in one group that's my opinion um so i lurk in a lot of those other groups but i i the cabal is really obviously where i post that's where i spend my time um, I just joined, I was actually looking recently, I'm a Mythic Legions collector, I do have a handful of other lines, but I recently really wanted, I'm sure if you're in the Cabal, you saw me trying to hunt one of these down, I really wanted a Mezco Lone Roach and Grub. Um, Mezco figures, Cornboy has told me for a while now, you got to get into the Mezco stuff, they're amazing, the 112 Collective. Um, I don't tend to like soft goods very much, so that kind of turned me away. Um, and realistically with Mezco, again, a little tangent here, but with Mezco, um, I'm not interested in all the licensed stuff, like, like the Marvel and DC stuff, because I have Marvel Legends. Um, I don't, I'm happy with my Marvel Legends, $20 figures. I don't need an $80 to $120 version of that character, um, as cool as they may be. What really did appeal to me about Mezco was their original characters. So Gomez and Baron Benz, those were two characters that I just thought looked wonderful. Um, I did get a Baron Benz in a trade. It's an absolutely amazing figure. When it came to Gomez, I know there's a number of versions. Um, you've probably heard me talk before about the Japanese manga Lone Wolf and Cub. It's where my, my Kitsune Lone Fox and Pup customs came from they were inspired by that um so the fact that mezco did a set called lone roach and grub that's you know inspired by lone uh, wolf and cub that was obviously something that i was interested in so i was trying to hunt one down i was suggested that i should join some of the mezco groups which i did um so that's my first experience i mean it's very different it's i'm so used to the cabal i'm so used to mythic legions that dipping my toes in some of these other communities um it's definitely a really strange experience um it's both good and bad i mean it's a different group different different complaints different different tone completely um i can be a lurker there i mean i posted something no one knows who i am in those groups which is very different from the mythic legions groups um i mean you know i'm one of the admins of the cabal so it, it's it's interesting, but I agree with you, Amy. That was my rant to say. Um, I agree with you. Not having 
collector friends locally. Uh, it makes being in groups like this, it makes being part of these communities so, so rewarding. And it, to see stuff like that with all those collecting. The funny thing about those Facebook challenges, though, is they go on your timeline. So all of my non like mythic legions all of my non-toy collecting connections are all seeing me just post post toy after toy after toy um and while a lot of people know i collect toys it's certainly not a secret i used to own a toy store it's certainly not a secret um it's not something i share publicly on though on my regular feed very often so it's been interesting some of them are commenting some of them are enjoying it um others i'm sure are putting me on mute who cares with that, I think let's start talking about the topic at hand. So 3D printing, this, this whole aspect of collecting and customizing has absolutely changed Mythic Legions for so many of us. The fact that we now have access to so many unique parts that we can enhance our Mythic Legions figures with is absolutely incredible. Um, I mean, you, you hear Mythic Legions collectors talk about this. They've never seen a line. I've been collecting for 20-something years. I've never seen a line like this that has not only the customizing potential in the line itself, but has created such a community of creators around it that are so ravenous to add to the line to to put their spin on things that they are now creating pieces as well there's a ton of people i mean 3d printing software you can get some for free you know obviously something like zbrush is going to cost you more money that's you know um professional level uh sculpting tools uh but you can get a lot of you know inexpensive or even free platforms so people are experimenting with 3d printing 3d printers have come down in price while the quality has gone up so you can get great really nice 3d printers for what you know a few hundred dollars three four hundred bucks and you can get a pretty decent printer these days it's making this so much more accessible and i think that's a good and a bad thing in some ways so i want to talk about that tonight and as i said i covered 3D heads before, but I just focused on heads. Today, I'm going to talk about torsos and weapons and all of these other add-ons that people are doing and really what an incredible uh, boon it is for us as collectors and customizers. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, Joe saying Tri-State has to meet when everything passes. So Tri-State, um, they created another little group on Facebook uh, for a bunch of Mythic Legions collectors, kind of from the Tri-State area. I'm not from the Tri-State area. I'm from Rhode Island, but I get to be in that group, I guess, by proxy. So that's awesome. Uh, Anthony saying Conia will be my first Mezco. It's funny. Conia was the first Mezco I ordered. Um, I got sucked in to that because I saw it in the Mythic Legions groups and I saw how quickly, a, like Mezco's weird because some stuff sells out like instantly and other stuff sticks around. And I couldn't tell which was which. So I thought Conia was gonna fly. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna jump on this. I'm gonna buy it right away. If I don't like it, I can always flip it. Um, I jumped on it and it clearly wasn't one of their limited exclusives. They shared it with others as well um, but it looks really really cool i don't know if it's going to fit my display I, i've got a sinking feeling that it's going to come in and i'm going to want to use his accessories for a custom but i'm not going to be able to bring myself to to you know cannibalize that like 110 dollar mezco so i have a feeling that the conan is going to end up coming into my hands and going right back out um again it's i kind of dig the uh the, the the original characters they do more than the licensed stuff so when it comes to 3D printing and creating these, uh, the first name that I think a lot of us know, um, certainly the first pieces that I ever experimented with came from Shapeways. Um, Shapeways is still around. If you're not familiar, Shapeways is like an online marketplace for 3D printed whatever. Um, and it's really great for creators because they can create a model and rather than having to invest in printers and doing that all themselves, they can send the models directly to Shapeways. Shapeways can print it, send them examples so they can test it. Um, and then if they want to go to market with it, Shapeways will say, okay, this part is going to cost $6 to print. 
you can mark it up to 15 and then you as a creator get to sell that through Shapeways. They do printing and order fulfillment um, and then you get a percentage there. Uh, made a lot of sense back when 3D printers were wildly expensive. I think it's less and less useful today as these printers become accessible. And I know there's a lot of creators, Emil Wickman being one of them. So Emil had parts on Shapeways. I've ordered Emil's parts on Shapeways. Now Emil is working with Wolf King Customs primarily because he wasn't happy with the quality from Shapeways. And that's always been one of the problems. I know when I first got uh, a piece from Shapeways, I was I had never had a 3D printed part. Um, all I had ever seen was the 3D printers that you'd go to like, like Barnes and Noble and they'd have one set up that was printing something and it was it was a piece of like blue plastic and it was all like the different layer lines and to me early on that was 3D printing and I was like that that looks so cheap that's not what I'm going to want to use with my my display with my collection um, but when I saw Shapeways I said oh this is very different like these actually look really really cool and clearly they were showing renders so you see the renders and it looks really really good then when you get the parts in hand, I found them to be, you know, not as smooth as I wanted. And when you when you order from Shapeways, they all many models will have different kinds of materials you can use. Um, I would always go to the most expensive materials, the best quality, you know, high definition plastic or whatever it's called. Um, I would always go with that, and I still wouldn't like the quality. Um, now Shapeways has gotten better. The first pieces I ever got, I got a couple swords. Um, I've certainly gotten better pieces from Shapeways today, but I still think that they are an inferior platform when it comes to 3D printing. Um, I have a few pieces here from Shapeways. And one thing I've noticed from Shapeways, so this is the head and it's it's unpainted, so you're not, you're not gonna be able to see the detail, but this is a female elf head. Um, and this was actually created by uh, Planetary Dog Toys. So Planetary Dog Toys, we're going to talk about them in more detail shortly. Um, but this is the creation of Sabadam and uh, Julie. I, not, actually, I'm not sure Julie's last name. Um, but Saba and Julie, they are the, the, the team of artists that do all of these different sculptures. And they, they sold on Shapeways for a while. They've had an interesting history. They used to work, Saber used to work with My Action Figure Customs. Then he kind of broke off on his own and he, you know, had a Shapeway shop. Um, and I, I used to mention to Saber, I used to tell him, hey, I love your stuff, but I don't like Shapeways. Um, Saber actually sent me some pieces a while back that he printed at his, on his printers at his home in Spain. Um, but I did also get a couple on Shapeways. And one of the things I've noticed about some Shapeways heads, and I think this is based on the model, is like the head is hollow. Like this head, and, and some pieces definitely come hollow because they're big and it's cheaper to print them that way than a big hunk of resin. Um, but this head, if you look inside of it, there's like little holes in the head. Um, and I have to assume that allows them to print it less expensive because it's just less material. The problem is they feel cheap. Like they don't feel like good quality. They just feel so incredibly flimsy. Um, I just don't care for it. Now I do have other pieces from Shapeways. So this is a head that Vincent Garma. So Vincent Garma has a shop on Shapeways as well. And he did a head sculpture that it looks like a classic D&D character called a GIF Yankee. And it's kind of like this weird alien skeleton type character. Um, this head, also from Shapeways, Vincent was nice enough to send me one to test out with. Um, you can see I sprayed it black. And it wasn't printed in black. I spray painted it black uh, in order to get some paint on. I just haven't had a chance yet. Um, but this feels much more solid. And that's why I say it's got to be a creator decision because it feels so different from this head from Planetary Dog to the one from Vincent Garma's shop. Um, really, really cool. I like this head a lot. It definitely feels good. I've shown this head multiple times on the show. Every time I show this custom, I get lots of comments. People love this guy. This is my Baron Sorrow. This head is a Shapeways piece 
This was actually sculpted by my friend Walter DeMarco. Walter posts um, online and his, his shop on Shapeways, his mass customs. It's an absolutely great piece. And again, very, very solid. Um, I also find the Shapeway stuff isn't super smooth sometimes. This is actually a kind of smoother piece, but also because it's a helmet, it lends itself to not having to be as crisp and as smooth because it's metal and I painted it to look all worn and dirty and stuff. Obviously, if you're doing like a female elf face, you want it to be smooth. And this one is actually smooth. Really, for me, it's just the quality. Um, so Shapeways is an option. And there are a number of creators on Shapeways. There's a number of shops on there where you can get some really, really cool stuff. But I feel that the exciting stuff, all of the really exciting stuff happening for Mythic Legions add-ons are happening outside of Shapeways. Um, the first one, as soon as you get away from Shapeways, the first one that really started doing this was obviously my action figure customs, William Robert Post. He started that. And if you've ever heard him talk about the start, you know, he used to prototype stuff on Shapeways where he he actually started working with Sabadam, who I've just mentioned a few times. Um, he commissioned him for some pieces that William Robert Post wanted for his own collection. Uh, he was using shapeways to to prototype the stuff he would send it to shapeways wait until they printed it send it back to him he would test fit it and say no this isn't right we gotta change this gotta change this he finally got to the point where he said you know what i'm gonna buy a printer and just test it myself to cut down that time frame you know from uh initial idea to actual produced item um, and then he decided that he was going to offer these for sale to others and that's really how my action figure custom started you know you can certainly read there's an interview with with him on uh the sourcehorseman.com he's been interviewed on uh you know my wife is going to kill me podcast uh, you can certainly check out those and hear more about uh you know how he started the company uh, but my action figure customs, they're obviously the most rec recognized name. Um, they do some amazing stuff, they, incredible variety. That's one of the things that I think is most impressive. You know, they started with heads. So they started with heads, uh, really focusing on, you know, barbarian type heads. I know that, again, he started it. He wanted to create like a barbarian ravager type uh group so early on that's what a lot of the heads looked like and you know obviously every creator is going to have their opinions what they really like if you look at the stuff from my action figure customs they're obviously into the evil characters they're into the ogres and the orcs and the barbarians a lot of it is pretty brutal type stuff um but they graduated from heads and now they're doing a lot of stuff. They actually started by doing weapons. So they went from heads and they started weapons and the weapons were incredibly popular. I remember, you know, the first weapons I think they did were goblin weapons. Um, and in that sale, I remember hearing him talk about the fact that he thought the heads were going to be super popular and the weapons would be a little add on. And it was the exact opposite. The weapons, people I went crazy for the weapons, um, which makes sense. Mythic Legions come with a finite number of weapons. So wanting to outfit your goblin army with different, you know, instruments of destruction makes a lot of sense that you'd want to get some, some 3D printed weapons. Um, since then, he's moved on to things like torso. So this is a torso that I got in <clears throat> one of their more recent sales. It was called the Leather Torso. And it's cool because, again, one of the great things about this 3D printed stuff is it fills a gap. The fact that, you know, all the 1.0 characters have either the metal torsos, there's the tunic chest, or there's the bear torso. Um, no one is wearing leather armor. So sculpting a piece like this that has a different kind of armor, that's going to give me some different options with, with my customs. Um, and that's one of the cool things. And he's done other things, you know, nice add-ons. Like this is this is a little helmet that goes on top of a skeleton. Super easy add-on that lets you change up the look. Uh, this piece here. This is another helmet that goes on a goblin. Again, allows you to take a goblin legion builder and really change the way that character looks just by adding this helmet. The detail on my action figure custom pieces are unbelievable. Um, the sculptors that 
uh, working with that group. Um, obviously, like I said, Saba started there. Saba is, you know, top of the game. He's wonderful as a sculptor, Saba and Julie. Um, Saba is not sculpting for my action figure customs anymore. Although some of the pieces that they offer are still some of the pieces he sculpted back in the day. Um, great pieces, wonderful variety. My biggest complaints with my action figure customs are durability. Uh, I'm, you know, when I'm painting these things and I'm back there and I've, I've got this in my hand and you know, you're holding it and you're trying to paint, I, I, from time to time I drop these. And I'm, I'm not even saying I drop them far, drop them from my hand onto the table that is literally right in front of me. Um, and to be perfectly blunt, I've broken a lot of my action figure custom pieces. Um, now some of that isn't the necessarily the durability of the item itself. Some of it is the fact that the pieces they're putting out are so detailed and they have lots of little pieces. You know, when you've got something that has these little tiny horns that come off, there's so little material there that even just nud bumping those the wrong way is likely to break them. Um, that is part of the, the give and take to have that level of detail in those little, little pieces. You're going to have you know, a sense of fragility in these. Um, these are not made with PVC plastic like Mythic Legion's figures. Um, Mythic Legion's figures, the bodies are made with PVC plastic. The weapons, the, the sturdier, uh, real more rigid weapons, those are made with um, ABS plastic. Um, and then some of the joints are made with a different kind of plastic, uh, like POM or something. Um, but the stuff, these three printing, they're not made with those kinds of plastics. It's it's a different material. Um, it is definitely not going to have the same kind of flexibility as like a soft rubbery type piece that you would get from a production piece. So, you know, that is really my thoughts about my action figure customs. Um, they were first to the game. Incredible, incredible variety. I know a lot of people who get into this now, they go to that website and they look in the vault and they see some of the old stuff and they really want some of those old pieces to get introduced. Um, and they seemingly have been very hesitant to do that. They want to keep moving forward. They want to put out new stuff, not revisit old stuff, um, which as a creator, I totally get that. As a fan, I understand that's super frustrating that you want access to those things. Um, I've seen a lot of the older pieces really starting to spike price on the secondary market. Um, that's really challenging. You know, this piece here, talking about variety, another super popular piece every time I show it here is my drowned ogre. So my drowned ogre here that has this Cthulhu-like head, um, this head was something that he debuted that my action figure customs debuted last year at the legions con event we did in new jersey um it was a super popular head um i saw a painted one of these heads sell recently for like 175 dollars that's insanity that uh, that a painted piece would go just the head would go for that kind of money um but it's a testament to the desirability of this line the desirability of these pieces um, and the limited nature of them. Because again, these are not being produced in large numbers. So if you miss out, you miss out. And you, you know it's going to be hard for you to, to come back and get them unless you're willing to pay the extra through my action figure customs. Again, that's, that's what they're doing. Now, they have started releasing some of the older stuff, I guess, here and there on some of the, the most previous sale. They, they did that. Um, they, they resold some stuff like this. So talking about different parts, um, this is pieces that Zombie 13 sculpted. Um, Zombie 13, a uh, friend of mine, I've known Zombie for a very long time in the collector circle. Uh, what he had done was he had sculpted this mask add-on for the, the Kauros figure to give Kauros kind of that battle cat type helmet look. Um, and this is the the helmet style, not the classic Battle Cat. This is like the, the 2000X version of Battle Cat. He also did some cat feet that well, you could pop onto this figure as well to outfit the Kaoros and the Purplar figure. He did a helmet for Purplar as well that is based on the Motu Classics Panthor type look with the, uh, the curled horns. Um, but again, a lot of variety for my action figure customs. Great, great detail. If you're going to buy them, my 
my suggestions to you is when they do a sale, get in there early because stuff does sell out. They have, you have a limited amount of those pieces, um, whether they're painted or unpainted. Most of what they offer are unpainted. Um, they do painted sales from time to time as well. Zombie 13 is actually one of the people that paint. Drew Grubbs, who checks me out every week here. Drew does some painting for them as well. Drew also takes commissions for painting parts. I saw him just post that recently. Um, so if you got some parts from my Action Figure Customs, you're looking for him to paint, he can do that. Um, but they do sell out. So if you do want their parts, get on there early. And when you get them in hand, be very, very careful. They are incredibly fragile. Of all the 3D printing companies that I have parts from, um, and I have parts from all of them, um, they are the most fragile by far. If you drop them, they absolutely are going to break. Um, and I am a testament to that because I've dropped the parts, I've bumped into the parts, um, I've been on a photo shoot and a figure as I'm trying to take a photo falls over and a part cracks. Super, super frustrating. Um, you gotta be very careful with them. After my action figure custom, the next 3D printed company that you should look at is Planetary Dog Toys. So I've mentioned Saba and Julie a number of times on the show already. Um, they got their start. They, they, I shouldn't say got their start. They were introduced to the Mythic Legions community through my action figure customs. They were sculpting well before that point, but that was really where they got introduced to this community. Um, and obviously they've taken a liking to it because they continue to do work. Um, their website is Planetary Dog Toys, and they are a very, very different business model than my action figure customs. I'm going to actually pause for one second because I do see a bunch of questions in here. So I'm going to jump to those. I'm actually going to jump back. Okay, let's see. So, uh, Demon saying, I love planetary dog toys. You can always get their stuff. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, the availability. Uh, a couple, Someone asking for an ogre scale Medusa and some, some nice looking Pegasus is. Um, so clearly you're into Greek mythology. Uh, is there any Greek mythology characters in Mythos? No, not really. I mean, there's the Mercurians that look like, you know, Spartans, um, but... There's no, there, there's no, one of the things, and, and the guys have said this before, you're never going to see necessarily like exact renditions of historical characters. I mean, they're the Templars. That's probably the closest that they're going to do. They like to take elements from history, but put a bit of a fantasy spin on them. Um, so you're not going to necessarily see purely um, different cultures uh, or even different mythologies, you're going to see more characters that are influenced by those. Um, you might see a Gorgon, who knows? I mean, you know, obviously we've seen Minotaurs. That's a classic myth there. So I think that's what we're going to see. Let's see. Uh, are there any alternatives to shape ways for all your design heads that you think have better quality? So yeah, that's what we're talking about. Um, I went from shape ways. I, then I talked about my action figure um, I got a couple others that we're going to talk about planetary dog toys and Wolf King customs. Those are all places where you can get really, really high quality pieces. They all have their pluses and minuses. I just went through those for my action figure customs. I'm going to get to the others in a moment, moment. Uh, Master Horner saying, my biggest complaint is they don't come painted. Um, if I wasn't blind, I would paint them myself. Yeah, that is definitely a complaint. And I know Wolf King Customs, the reason that Len is offering painted versions. When we did the Kitsune, the reason I agreed to paint so many Kitsune was I know there are a lot of collectors that they, they want to customize, but they want to just pop a head on a figure. And there's nothing wrong with that, Okay. You don't need to buy the paints and do all this stuff. This is a hobby. You should enjoy it. If you see that piece and you say, I'd love to have one, but I don't want to buy it unpainted and then have to worry about shipping it to someone and having them paint it and ship it back. Um, I understand that's a hassle. So being able to buy them painted 
from the source is definitely enjoyable. And I know that I personally heard from a lot of fans that were deeply appreciative that I agreed to paint all those pieces. Um, I'm also going to be painting some pieces in their upcoming sale. Um, some of the, the pieces that Emil designed, uh, that including that ogre. So I agree with you. I know that painted pieces are important for certain people. Um, I can tell you from my conversations with Len, he gets it as well. So at the very least, Wolf King Customs is definitely one that is going to be doing that. Ryan, is most of the sculpting done digitally or does anyone still do traditional sculpting? I mean, there are still people that traditional sculpt. I know Matt O'Toole from Castle of Power. He still, he still sculpts by hand. Um, I know that for Horseman Studios, everything they do is digital. Um, and they've talked about this, you know, Eric, he obviously learned how to sculpt, um, you know, with clay and everything, uh, not digitally. Um, and they actually fought against 3D sculpting hard for years. Like as everyone else was moving to that, as the industry was moving, they fought tooth and nail. And once they finally took it on and once they finally started doing it, Eric, I mean, he has said that he cannot imagine going back. It is so so much better for him as a creator to work digitally. Um, and obviously with the 3D printing, with everything, um, being digital is very, very important. I know like with uh, like with my action figure customs, Zombie doesn't do digital sculpting. Zombie still sculpts traditional. And then he generally sends his parts to someone like um, GD Lake, who then translates that physical sculpture into uh, a digital version that can be manipulated and eventually printed. Let's see what else here. A lot of comments tonight. Thank you very much for that, actually. I love comments. That's a, it's called Mythic Conversations for a reason. Um, Chris saying the Seventh Kingdom Minotaurs are awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I love those. Okay, great. Yeah, a couple people talking about getting painted stuff done and a bunch of people recommending Drew. Absolutely. Drew Grubbs is absolutely wonderful artist. Check him out. Um, great person too. You, you couldn't ask to work with a cooler person. Um, I actually don't have a piece painted by Drew. I'm going to rectify that soon. Um, there's actually a couple pieces that I really hope that he'll be able to paint for me. So I know he's got a piece. He actually ordered one of my kits and I had painted. So he's got one of my pieces in his collection. I have to reciprocate there. Um, but I was talking about planetary dog toys. So Sabe and Julie started this. And in talking to them, I know that one of the important things to them was they wanted people to have access to their products all the time. So that was one of the, the challenges was because my action figure customs does, you know, sales, you know, periodically. Um, and if you miss it, you miss it. Saber really as an artist, you know, as a creator, there's, there's something genuinely awesome about having your creations in other people's hands. So when someone misses it and says, Hey, I really want that. I wish I could have one as a creator. It kind of pains you that you can't get it to them. So Sable wanted obviously more control of that. He wanted to be able to ensure that people have access to them. Um, and this is based on just what he has told me through conversations, through chat. Uh, but so that's why they started Planetary Dog Toys. Um, now, if you've ordered from Planetary Dog Toys recently, you probably know what one of the challenges of trying to offer stuff on demand all the time is. And it's that it's hard to sometimes keep up with demand if it is popular. And we all know that Mythic Legions fans are ravenous and we like to order things. So as he put stuff up for sale, a lot of customizers have placed orders. Some of those orders are likely very large. They've had a hard time keeping up. Um, I just got a package in from Planetary Dog Toys the other day that I ordered over a month ago. I know a lot of other people have been waiting that long or even longer. Um, they have stopped taking orders right now so they can fill all of those orders. Um, you know, obviously when you're doing 3D printing, if you have a printer that goes down, if you've got four printers and one of them goes down, 
you've just cut your output capacity by 25%. So there's always a challenge when it comes to this type of stuff to producing lots of orders coming in. Suddenly you got a printer or two that goes down. You're waiting for parts to come in. Your actual, the ability to produce items has been decreased while orders are coming in. Um, that's going to have an impact. So that I would say is one of the challenges with Planetary Dog Toys is it's great that the items are always there. The unfortunate thing right now is they're still trying to figure out fulfillment. Seba and Julie are over in Spain. One of their printers, I believe they are doing some printing in Spain as well to maybe fulfill stuff in Europe. They're also, you know, uh, printing stuff here in the U.S. with a distributor who's sending stuff out as well. So there's a lot of moving parts. I'm sure that's challenging. However, the pieces themselves are gorgeous. And they're doing some stuff that nobody else is doing, specifically female heads. Look across all these other companies and you don't see female parts. Saba and Julie are doing them. And they're not only doing them, they're doing them really, really well. This is a piece that I got from Saba a while ago that is this awesome, like, fairy pixie type character. Now, actually, I should say, I think they created this to be a female goblin. I think that's what it was supposed to be. Um, but when I saw it, I absolutely saw like a pixie there. So I created this fairy character out of it. Um, it adds a totally new kind of character to my display. And this is not something I have access to anywhere else. Because once again, no one else is doing female heads. This is one that I've spray painted to get a base coat on, but I haven't actually had a chance to fully paint yet. And it's another one of his female heads and it's like another female elf. And she's got these great like ring curls that come down. Um, and I know Julie does a lot of these sculptures and they're, they're beautiful. They're great looking pieces that if you're looking for some variety, they absolutely are going to add that variety with those female type characters. Now, I'm looking to see what parts I have here. Um, in addition to stuff like that, in addition to those female heads, they also have a lot of male heads. Um, they've done a lot of orc heads. There's a lot of like helmeted orcs that, and, and they're doing shoulder pads that you can really outfit with heavy, heavy armor. They've done a number of uh, cat type characters, tigers and lions. Um, they have a, a figure called, or head I should say, called Hadar. The, the Hadar, the lion is gorgeous. Joy, joy, joy to paint. Nice, big, big, heavy piece. Um, I love that piece. I don't have that on the table here, but if you check out my website, it's there. Um, and then he started doing torsos recently as well. And a lot of you have probably seen this torso, uh, which is great. Oh, so many people had requested a fat body, fat orcs, fat, you know, oversized goblins. Um, you know, fat dwarves. This has been used in so many different customs like that. Um, Nikki Nicole Cheney used this with the Swamp Harper heads from my action figure customs to do some like Bullywug type looking characters with these big, big bellies. And they looked absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is one I just got from him that this is more of like a armored type torso that looks just Really, really cool. Again, if you're looking for different body parts to customize with, to give you some different looks that are still totally compatible, all the arms plug into this, you know, everything plugs in there. Um, it works really, really well. And that's actually a good segue, a good point that I should make here about plugging stuff in, whether it's heads, whether it's torsos, whether it's like a helmet like this. So putting this head on the goblin, I said that my action figure customs parts are very, very fragile. Well, they are, but they're also incredibly flexible if you heat them. So putting that helmet on, if I would have tried to force that helmet onto that goblin's head, I guarantee you I would have broken that helmet. It would have just split. However, Hitting it with a blow dryer for a little bit of time, it makes it so incredibly flexible. It fit right back on. And then when it cools, it's nice and rigid and solid again. So if you're using any of these parts, especially something like the torso, and you need to plug pieces in, heat it up with a blow dryer first. Um, I use either the hot water method or I usually use the hot water method for heating parts unless they're painted. 
um, or if they're 3D printed pieces. If it's 3D printed pieces and it's painted, I would just use a blow dryer to heat that up. But if you're gonna put, the arms plug in fine, but especially the torso pieces, the uh, kind of the waist piece that goes there or the ogre heads, if you're doing ogre heads and it feels like a tight fit, blow dry it a little bit, make it more malleable, that'll pop it on a lot easier. Uh, Sabe has also been doing a lot of ogre scale stuff. So he's been doing pieces that are available in both six inch scale, so like orcs, and nine inch scale, so ogres as well. So you can get the same head in different sizes, lots of different expressions. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, they'll have the same character that's got like a lot, like I, the lion actually, the, the King Hadar comes in like a regular passive face, one where he's kind of snarling and one where he's full on growling. Um, it's really cool to have those different options. Uh, there's a number of hairstyles. So a lot of the L's that they're doing come with different hairstyles and different expressions, passive and smirking and snaring. Uh, if you want some variety, they are doing variety when it comes to expressions and stuff like that better than anybody. Very, very cool. Hopefully they're going to get some of their shipping challenges sorted soon. I'm sure they are. And then the availability is going to be even better. Um, another downside I will offer and it's in line with what someone said a few minutes ago about wanting painted pieces. Planetary Dog Toys has never offered painted pieces. I don't know if they ever plan in the future to offer painted pieces, but that is not something they have done yet. So if you do want their pieces and you aren't comfortable painting, you will have to commission somebody to paint those pieces for you. Okay, let's see. Diego saying, do you need to sand the torsos where you plug in the arms to avoid paint scratches or rubs? No, I don't sand any of these. And it's a good point. So when I was talking to Len actually earlier, and I keep saying Len, if you don't know who Len is, when I say Len, I mean Len LaGuardia. Len LaGuardia is a personal friend of mine. Len LaGuardia is the person that owns Wolf King Customs, who are actually going to be the next company that we talk about. Um, and Len, I, I was telling him today, hey, I'm going to be doing a topic tonight about 3D printing. Uh, can I just pick your brain a little bit? Because I don't, I don't 3D print. I don't have a 3D printer, so I don't. I'm not the one that's into this. I use the parts all the time, but I'm not printing. Uh, so when I asked him, I asked him stuff like that because I never sand parts. I never, I never do anything to them. I know Nikki washes them down, and I guess she, I guess that's a good thing to do. I don't even do that. Um, but one of the things Len had mentioned, and I'm going to talk about this in a bit when I talk about all of the new creators that are coming in, um, there is something to be said for the quality of the prints you're getting. When I get these prints from my action figure customs or from uh, Planetary Dog Toys or from Wolf King Customs, there's really no work that I have to do. There's not like little nubs that have to be sanded off. They, they, they look, they're ready to go. Um, and part of that is the job that they do. As printers, they know how to orient these things so they print really, really well. And they all do some prep work themselves before they send them to you. They are prepared, they are ready to go. Um, occasionally you might find like a little nub or something, but it's incredibly minor. And most of the time you don't even know that it's there. It, it looks like part of the armor or something. Um, obviously, if you're going to get pieces from someone that's not as good, as some of these creators that I'm focusing on tonight, you may have some, some nubs, you may have some, some, you know, sanding that you have to do some things like that. Um, actually, one of the other creators that I did want to talk about, and it is relevant to what you're just asking with sanding and nubs, uh, these are not 3D printed, but there's another creator out there worth mentioning uh, Big Head Studios is, I believe, what they go by. On eBay, they are G.I. Joe Eben. So if you've seen a lot of the like orc heads that were done a while ago where people added beards to them and mohawks and everything, um, that's from this studio. A lot of what they did early on was take Mythic Legion's heads and sculpt on top of them to make them different. Um, and there's always been a question whether or not that is okay to do. Um, Four Horsemen have kind of said, look, if you're straight casting our stuff, absolutely not. You cannot do that. However, if you're using it as a base and you're 
significantly changing it. You are materially changing that sculpt to something new. They've kind of turned a blind eye to that. I mean, not to say they're always going to do that, but that's what they've done so far. Um, and this is an example of one of those. So this is an orc that's got like an eye missing and it looks like, I mean, actually it's, it, it looks like gauze. It looks like, you know, some kind of like gauze uh, bandage over the eye there. You've probably seen a lot of different creators using these. I know my friend Joe Vasapolo has used a lot of these heads from uh, Big Head Studios, G.I. Joe Evan, in his work. I've used a bunch of them as well. Uh, those aren't 3D printed. Those are, I believe, cast in resin. They're actually cat molds that they cast these heads. So a lot of times when I get these, there will be little kinds of fleshing that have to be sanded down and rubbed off. Um, one of the things they're doing now is apparently doing unique sculptures, uh, which is cool to see. It's cool to see that they're not just taking other people's stuff and adding on to it, that they're doing new pieces. This is a goblin that I got from them that a lot of people have seen. I um, mean, this is one that I haven't even shown yet that I fully painted up. This is one they did that was kind of like a bog goblin. It actually looks to me like a classic D&D character or D&D race called a slab, S-L-A-A-D. Um, it does look like a bog goblin. If you're in the Mythic Legions world, it's going to look like a bog goblin to you. Uh, but I really like the character. And this is something that they cast. Uh, it's another option for you to look at as well. Again, they're on eBay as G.I. Joe Ebb. And if you just look up Mythic Legion's head, you'll probably find a bunch of these. So that brings me to Wolf King Customs. So I've talked about Wolf King Customs at length on this show. Um, and there's obviously a few reasons. Len, who owns the company, is a personal friend of mine. Um, Len also is the person that put out the Kitsune heads that I had originally commissioned. I'm not going to go into telling the story again. I've told it on this show before, but long story short, I commissioned these heads from my friend Walter DeMarco of Mass Customs for my personal use. Len printed them up and eventually did make them available for sale. They were actually Wolf King Customs' first products for sale. Um, you know, these 3D printed parts, they were a couple different fox heads. They were these regular fox heads. And there were uh, there was one that went in the hood of the the like Mythic Legion's Ranger, uh, and it also came with these tails that plug into the back of the figures, so you could create this type of a fox character. So this is I've done a ton of these Kitsune characters, but this is kind of my my signature one. This is my I, like I said earlier, my lone fox and pup character. So this is lone fox, the pups in the case. Um, one of the nice things I really like about Wolf King Customs, and, you know, I am clearly biased. I have no problem saying that because he is my friend. Um, but I will step back for a second and tell you what I really do like about them. I love the durability. These are really, really very strong pieces. I just threw that on the ground. It is unchipped. There is nothing damaged on that head. You literally, you literally saw me this. Ugh. I am throwing that down. You can hear me doing that, right? And I just lost it. You can hear me throwing that head on the ground hard, okay? There is nothing chipped. There is nothing damaged on this head. Now, I'm not suggesting you should get these and do that. That's a bad idea, especially if you buy a painted one. Um, however, the fact when I was talking about durability, the fact that I, I don't have to worry if I drop one of these, that it's going to shatter. The fact that I can do that and it's perfectly fine is incredibly impressive. That right there, it's still fine. Still totally fine. Look, look at the tips of those ears. Those tips of those ears are just as sharp as always. That is obviously incredibly impressive. And again, don't do that. That was just my demonstration of it. But the fact that if you're painting these and you drop them, they're not going to break like that. 
That is incredibly important, I think. I love, love, love the quality. And the quality is not commit the sacrifice of any of the sculpture quality. Um, those who have gotten their kits today heads in have said that they absolutely love the, the look of them, whether they got the unpainted or the painted, um, they love the quality of the sculpture. A lot of people commented on the quality of the paints, um, the quality of the print. It's really, really good. And what I like about Wolf King Customs is the variety they are doing. So as a creator, I love orcs and ogres and barbarians and all that. Um, but I see a lot of the other companies focusing on a lot of those characters. Again, Planetary Dog does the females and the felines, which I really appreciate. But there's so many of those evil characters that I like to see some variety. The fact that, you know, Wolf King came out with these fox heads first is really, really cool. But they didn't just want to be like, hey, we're going to do all animal customs. The fact that they're following that up this week with this head from a meal and these add-ons here so this this hammer topper just goes right on top of an ogre scale weapon you can make it a short hammer you can make it a long hammer here's the spear topper that's going to be there um that is really really cool that variety the fact that he decided to partner with emil wickman um and emil is doing a lot of these types of characters and not only these um emil is doing vampires and dwarves and all these different characters that are going to add a lot of variety so that's one of the things that i think they really have going for them and they're also doing lots of fun stuff like this so a lot of people are just starting to get these in this scabbard that is on the back here how many of you have gotten mythic legion swords on your figures and you put them through the belt in the back but the blade is just hanging there. And you're like, ah, I really wish that they had an actual like scabbard, a sheath to put it in. And the fact that that's what this is, that this was designed to actually just go right in. And this one, I actually had a broken sword. So I just put the broken sword in this one because I couldn't use it anywhere else. Um, the full sword actually fits right in there. Really, really nice piece. And it slides right in. It's very, very cool. Um, he made it in both 1.0 and 2.0 because the back pegs are different. But that's some of the really cool stuff that I like from Wolf King. I really like the variety. I really like the quality. And I really like some of the add-on stuff. You know, in addition to heads, um, you know, he's not getting into torsos at this point and stuff like that. At least he hasn't shown any. Um, but the fact that he's got some variety, that you're going to see some evil characters, you're going to see some some more critters. Um, I've talked at length about the Kitsune. Um, those are coming back in early July. There's going to be a set of painted Kitsune. They're going to be available again. And as you saw at the start of the show, they're going to have some friends with them that were hiding out in my case over there. Those are all very, very cool things. So wolfkingcustoms.com. Um, they do have a sale this Saturday. Uh, that that ogre head that I showed here and these weapons, that's going to be available. Um, the, the, the Everything's available unpainted. There's also going to be a vampire head that Emil Wickman did. There, there's going to be a couple surprises as well. Uh, everything is unpainted. There will also be painted versions available. I know these weapons are being done painted. There's going to be a very, very limited number of these heads painted, um, and they're going to be pricey. Uh, I mean, I got to tell you, this, it takes a lot to do to paint that with all of that detail inside the mouth and everything. Um, so they are a premium priced piece. Um, they're going to be, I believe, around $75 painted. Um, but again, if you're looking for a painted piece, the ogre just fell. But you know what? It's okay, because it's a Wolf King Customs piece. And even though it just fell, he is totally fine. Nothing is wrong with him. I just lost the spear tip because it actually fell off in my hand as I put him down. But don't have to worry about it breaking. I saw a couple of people say that that demo that I did throwing the fox head was really good. Um, the funny thing is that was totally spur of the moment. I hadn't planned to do that. I just happened to have an extra fox head and I had plenty of extra fox heads. So I just decided I was going to throw it. 
And I honestly kept throwing it to see how long it would take me to break it, and I haven't broken it. So that's pretty impressive. Um, I will tell you that I have chipped one box head. I've literally at this point painted probably 150 of them, um, and I've only ever chipped one. So that, I think, tells as much about the quality as much as me throwing it on the ground. <laughs> awesome. Anthony saying, I'm painting Wolf King Customs as I'm watching this. Awesome. Adrian saying, that scabbard sealed the deal for me. Absolutely. Yep, Patrick, I love the scabbards. Yeah, the scabbards are great. Uh, the daggers as well. As soon as he showed me, as soon as Len showed me the scabbards, I said, that fills a need. That's awesome. That, that fills a need. People are going to be really excited about that. See what I have here. Um, so check that out. There will be some painted parts available. Um, the painted parts are going to be limited. So if you do want painted pieces, I believe the sale starts at 3 p.m. Eastern time. My suggestion is get in there early if you want the painted pieces. They're unlikely to last. Um, the unpainted pieces, they're not going to limit them. So that was another thing that people really liked. And Wolf King's business model is kind of between what My Action Figure Customs seems to be doing and what Planetary Dogs does. So My Action Figure Customs, they announce a sale um, they don't even announce the time. They just announce the date. They put the stuff on sale and they have a, a fixed quantity of things, whether it's painted or unpainted. And once they're sold out, they're sold out. Um, Planetary Dog, we talked about being, you know, evergreen. They're always there. Order whenever you want. Uh, Wolf King is trying to be in between the two where it's not all they're not always in stock. Um, but when they do run a sale, they say, OK, the sale is going to last a week. Um, you don't need to worry about getting in there immediately to order because the pieces aren't going to sell out unless they're painted. The painted pieces do have a finite number because they take time to do. So to realistically be able to fill orders, you need to put a cap on how many you're going to actually paint. Um, but that's one of the nice things there. Um, the other thing is I just mentioned that the Kitsune pieces, which were available for sale recently, People still missed them. They're coming back around in early July. So that's another thing that I think people are going to like that I certainly as a fan like the fact that I can have access to stuff again. Um, there's a lot of times with all of these companies, there's a lot of times that I either skipped a part completely because I didn't know how I wanted to use it or I bought a part and then I wanted a second version of it to use it a different way. Um, how many of you have seen you know, a part and said, yeah, I don't really want that. And then people get them in and you start seeing painted versions and you're like, I really wish I would have bought one of those. Um, that's one of the cool things about stuff coming back regularly that if you do start seeing those kits in their heads and you said, you know what, that yeah, that's not for me. And then you see everyone using them and you're like, you know what, I, I, I really like that. I really can't stop thinking about it. I'd love to have one of those. You will have a shot. So that's kind of cool as well. So check out wolfkingcustoms.com. Sale is this Saturday. All the information is on the website. Check out planetarydogtoys.com. You know, Sabe and Julie, tell them J Jeremy sent you that you say hello. Um, my Action Figure Customs, all that stuff. Um, the last piece I want to talk about on this topic is, and I'm going to go back and look at some questions to end the night. Everyone I've just mentioned all of those companies I can personally vouch for. Not only have I ordered from them, but they've been around for a while. These are all people that it is safe to order from any of them. One of the challenges that I am seeing is I am seeing a lot of new creators come into the market, which is awesome. Okay, I have long said the more people doing this, the more variety we have. That is better for us as collectors and customizers. OK, if we only get one vision, if we only have, you know, my action figure customs, all we get is their vision. It's cool to have variety. It's cool to see what Seba and Julia are doing. It's cool to see what Wolf King is doing. It's cool to see what Vincent Garma is doing. Um, all of these different creators. That is really, really cool. I like that a lot. However, as some of these creators start trying to sell their products, I just caution you to be careful because there's money to be had in this market. And whenever there is money to be had, 
there is the risk that people are going to take advantage of us as collectors. Now, let me be very, very clear. I am not saying that any of these new creators are out to scam anybody. All I'm saying is the makings are here for that to happen. So buyer beware, be careful. Um, I have this piece here that was actually sent to me. You've probably seen this on the cabal. So this is a new piece by a company called Teal Titan. So a gentleman named Mark Kruger sent this to me and he reached out to me and he said, hey, I really appreciate everything you do for the community. I'd like to send you this head that I'm working on. And he sent me pictures of it and then he sent this to me totally for free, which is super, super cool. Of him. And I asked him up front, I said, well, what are you looking for? I mean, do you want me to paint this and help promo it? And he said, no, I don't, I don't need any of that. I genuinely am just sending it to you as a thank you. Um, I'd love to get your opinion on it, but no strings attached, um, which is awesome. I really, really appreciate that. Um, I know that he has put this up for sale. Um, it's like $83 unpainted, which it's, it's a gorgeous piece. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. That's, that's a lot of money. That, that's pricey. Um, when I see other ogre heads selling for, you know, 20 bucks and I see this at 80 something, um, I mean, this, this head here, which obviously it's going to get compared to. And I mean, this head is so desirable and they haven't reissued it, which is why something like this springs up. Someone sees a, whole, uh, a need in the market and they say, Hey, I'm going to fill that need. I'm going to produce it. Um, but that, that head was like $20 and that head is gorgeous. I mean, it is, that is literally one of my favorite, my action figure custom pieces they've ever done. Um, this head is sculpture wise, just as nice. However, it is very, very expensive. So I told you that I'm going to be honest tonight. Um, I think I've been honest and pretty balanced with all of the companies. Um, you can say that I haven't said anything negative about Wolf King Customs, they're new. Wolf King Customs are just starting out. They haven't. They don't have a much, no, enough of a track record yet for me to have anything negative. Um, they've had two sales. Both of those sales, they fulfilled them a couple weeks before they said they were going to. So so far, their track record's been very very good. Um, obviously, you know, Wolf King Customs is Len. Uh, he's a friend of mine. If he if there was something, if there was creative, uh, if there was constructive criticism that I could offer, I would have already told him. I think he's doing a bang up job. This is not me being biased. This is me being honest. I think they're doing a great job. Um, but back to this here, gorgeous piece. I think it's very, very expensive. Um, I also don't know a lot about the company. Um, I've asked, you know, who is printing, who is sculpting, um, and they don't want to reveal any of that information. They're playing it really, really close to the vest, which is their prerogative. They can absolutely do that. And I told Mark, Today, I said, hey, this actually just arrived today. Ironically, I'm talking about 3D customs tonight. I'm 3D printed stuff tonight. Uh, I'm going to talk about this. And I asked him these questions. And he, he, again, reiterated, hey, we're not ready to reveal that stuff yet. And I said, look, I'm going to be honest. That's one of the things I'm going to talk about. The fact that this project is very, very secretive and not a lot of details have been revealed yet. And that's a potential negative. You know, people want to buy from people that they trust. That, that makes sense, right? Obviously. Um, so gorgeous piece. I'm not saying be careful with, with Mark there. Um, I've personally actually sold stuff to Mark. I've dealt with Mark a number of times. That's not me endorsing him or his company. That is just me saying that I have actually dealt with him. He sent me a free thing. That is absolutely free. Um, but with all these different creators, Make sure you know what you're getting. From a quality standpoint too, I mentioned earlier that some of these creators that are putting out some stuff, I've seen a number of sculptures that people have been sharing on the groups lately. Um, some of them are great. Some of them I think are spot on. I could absolutely see any of the companies that I mentioned today producing something similar. Others I've seen look very, very amateurish. They look like standard stock uh, models that maybe they layered a couple things onto. Uh, that's obvious, especially when I look at the quality here, 
you know, you'd be hard pressed to find someone that has handled as many of these pieces as I have, um, other than the creators themselves. Obviously, the printers who are putting them out, they've handled more. Um, but I've worked with all these different pieces from a quality standpoint, from a quality of the sculpture standpoint. All of these are on par with each other. You know, what Wolf King is doing, what Planetary Dog Toys are doing, what my action figure customers are doing are all on par with each other. Some of the other stuff I'm seeing, maybe not as good. And it also makes me question what the print quality is going to be like. Um, there's others that I know are going to knock it out of the park. There's others that I know are really good. I know Brian Burke, Von Burke Customs, um, just seeing some of the stuff he's done on his customs. He did like this cool like death knight that he sculpted on top of a mythic legion. Seeing the quality of his work. Uh, I imagine that he's going to put out some pretty cool stuff. I saw a 3D sculpture he did that was like an orc vampire. Looked really, really cool. But that's the last thing I would offer. If you're going to make these purchases, any of the companies I mentioned, I would suggest you can deal with without hesitation. Anybody else, any creator that's going right on the cabal and saying, hey, buy my stuff, buyer beware. Just be careful with what you do. Okay? That's what I have to say on that. I'm going to check some questions. Before we end the night, let's look at what happens. So, yep, people were saying they love the scabbards. Um, how much will the unpainted ogre head be? I believe it's $20. I believe the unpainted ogre head is $20. I think that's what Len told me. Um, and I only, yeah, I think that's what it was. Do I think the ogre head would fit on a Marvel Select War Hulk? I don't have a Marvel Select Hulk anymore. I used to. I think it probably would fit. It might not be, it might not be the perfect size. Um, I mean, so I will say this, the, the hole underneath it is, is large. These holes are made specifically much bigger than they need to be so they can fit on a variety of figures. You can probably see there's some blue inside of there. That's just some blue poster tack that allows it to stay on, okay? But still be poseable. Um, because it's large and use a little bit of blue tack, even if that Marvel Select head, their pegs are usually really tiny, you could get it to fit. I don't know if size-wise the head's going to be perfect, but Hulk is such a weirdly shaped character anyway that a head that's a tiny bit too small or a little bit too big is probably going to look fine. Um, I think so, but I don't have one in hand, so I can't compare it. And I genuinely don't have, you know what? Hold on. So I do have this. I, I was like, I don't have a Marvel Select Hulk. I do have a Marvel Select Abomination that is actually, I think, a little bit bigger than Marvel Select Hulk. Um, now, I don't think his head easily comes off. Yeah, it doesn't. But what I will do is this is I will put this head up against this so you can see how that looks. So that's kind of the sizing. Um, it's actually about the size of the abomination head. They're almost the exact same size. So if you've got an abomination, or if you know the difference between the abomination and the Hulk, that's that should hopefully be a good good size comparison for you. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Joe earlier was saying get more than one scabbard, you won't regret it. Okay, so Deskezi is saying, Jeremy, so last week when he came on, he said he had two Mythic Legions um, that he bought from the in-stock sale, but he was waiting for them. He didn't have them in hand yet. These were his first two. And he's saying, how did he like them? I have six more in the mail and seven more on pre-order. I think I'm in. Yeah. Welcome to the club, man. That's what everybody does. Everybody jumps on. They get a figure. A lot of people start with the uh, the Motu tributes, the Chrono and Purple Lore type characters. They start with those because there's an attachment to Master of the Universe. I mean, once they get them in hand, they're just like, these are such cool figures that they're into the line. They start looking at the other characters. You go to the website and you look at the checklist and you see everybody on that checklist and you're like, goodness, I've got to grab more of these. Awesome. 
<laughs> See what else. Uh, Diego, will it only, will the painted ogre head only come in green, or will there be an Archimedes color option? No, it's only going to come in green, and there's going to be very limited. And when I say very limited, I'm talking single digits. Like, I, I'm literally so. Emil Wickman, interesting point. So Emil is in Sweden. Um, when Len printed these, he ideally wanted to get them over to Len so Len could paint the prototype picture, so Len could do all of the photography. Um, timing didn't work out. To actually get it over to Len, by the time he was done printing, it wouldn't have worked out. So uh, they reached out to me and they said, hey, would you be willing to paint up the prototype pieces if we send them to you? And I was like, you're going to send me stuff, free stuff for me to paint? Yes, I will do that. So they sent me these, so I painted them. Um, and I had asked Len, I said, hey, are you going to offer any of these painted? Because I know there are people that are not going to want to paint this, um, especially because this, I, I would not, like the Kitsune heads, I, those, are, those aren't difficult to paint. I did a video on my channel here on how to paint those. They're not terribly hard to do. Um, these are definitely a little more complex because of the open mouth, all the teeth, the gums. So I said, are you going to be offering any? And he said, well, that's not, that wasn't the plan. Um, and I said, well, I'll tell you what, I will paint up a couple of them. Um, it does a lot of work. It takes a lot of time to do. So they're going to be priced out, you know, higher um, to make it worth my time investment. However, to make it an option for the people that would want them, we'll do that. So that being said, there is a very limited number. And they're only going to be in the green. I'm not getting into the different color matching with Archimedes and all that. Yeah, Joe saying rescue tape uh, for neck balls. Yep, I know. I know you really appreciate. You really like that one a lot. Uh, Ryan saying is rescue tape permanent? No, it's not. Uh, you can take that right off. Uh, yeah, Duskeezy saying, yep, got Crown on Purple Law. That's how you started. Yeah, that's, again, that's where a lot of people come into the line. They grab those. It's funny because it's like a, a double-edged sword where they start with the Motu tributes, but the old Motu tributes always tend to be some of the harder ones to get. Um, other than like Melina, uh, obviously Adamon and Keltis and Unkin, those are all somewhat difficult figures to get these days. And while the Four Horsemen have never said we're not going to re-release them, they've kind of alluded to the fact that they they like the, the Motu tributes, the PowerCon debut figures generally being like one and done. They do them once. Mattel has been very, very cool to them by allowing them to do that. Um, they don't want to push that. So again, they never said they won't come back, but the signs kind of point to that. So people get into that, the Motu stuff, and then they, to backtrack and get the older Motu tributes ends up being expensive. But in the meantime, they start grabbing some of the other figures that are available and they're absolutely hooked. Hey, nice visionary from the old Four Horsemen boards. Thank you very much. Yeah, visionary, um, someone, the, the old Four Horsemen boards that were shut down when the new site went live. Uh, visionary was someone that I used to deal with there all the time. Looks like your name is Rafe on here. Um, thank you very much for joining. It's very cool to see you on this, this broadcast. And he's thanking me for what I'm doing with the line. And you're very, very welcome. I'm happy to be involved. Okay, so you're saying you appreciate the response. In comparison with the Abomination figure, I'm new to Legions, and this is my first time interacting on your show. So it was really cool to see you answer my question. Well, you asked a good question. I was happy to answer. It's a very relevant question. Um, I definitely combine a lot of pieces. It's funny because I said I don't have a Marvel Select Hulk. The reason I don't is I tore it apart to use for pieces. I used to have the, the Barbarian one, the one that has like the skull necklace, and I ended up using the skull necklace on an ogre and I cut off his feet and I used his feet on a half giant. So I ended up with just body parts and I think I threw it in a fodder pile that I sold on eBay. So I didn't have one, but I'm happy that I was able to at least grab that Marvel Select. Um, I do that all the time too. When I'm, whenever I'm thinking of buying a figure and I don't know how it scales, because it's so hard to, ch to tell scale, right? Um, when I don't know what the scale looks like, I will actually go on like YouTube and look up video reviews and hope they can peer 
that figure with one that I have so I know what they look like. So you said you're new to legions. Here's an example. Um, they're about the same height, and this, this ogre's crouched down a little bit. They're about the same height. Obviously, Abomination is a ridiculously heavy, uh, top-heavy, chunky figure, um, you know, but it doesn't move very well. These move much, much, much better. Um, if you say you're new to Mythic Legions and you don't have an Ogre yet, the Ogre Legion Builder is still available on Big Bad Toy Store at $50. It is a steal. Greg saying, I started two weeks ago and I have 37 figures ordered and get ready because more are coming. I'm telling you, so I, a lot of people that say they have stuff on order, I have to assume that what you're probably talking about are right now in Big Bad Toy Store, the pre-orders available are stuff from the All-Stars 3-Wave. So those are all reissue figures with the exception of the two Mo2 tributes that are in there. Um, there's also another run of figures coming in for some of the older, like Advent of Decay figures. Um, a lot of people have asked what those are, like, why are they redoing Brother Mandibulus? And, uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Lord, Lord Viteris is there, uh, Gonks. There's a whole bunch. I can't get into the whole list. Uh, apparently what, Ice Troll, apparently what happened is, when the order was placed, when Big Bad Toy Store placed their order for those figures, they were shorted a certain number. So they went back into production to fill that original order. That's what all of these are for. That's what all of those pre-order figures are. It's not technically a second run. Like it's not like a, like a pseudo All-Stars wave where they just said, hey, let's just redo all these. It was genuinely to fill the original order they placed. But for us as fans, it gives us access to them again. So those are available. And then obviously the Aerithair wave. If you haven't pre-ordered the Aerithair wave yet, those figures, I've seen them in person. I've seen them in person a couple times actually. Um, when I've gone to the studio, they are jaw dropping. I absolutely love those figures. To me, as, as much as this line has blown up in the last few years, once those figures hit, once those horses hit, and that Aerithair, all of those characters, it is going to be game changer for this line. So don't sleep on those. Get in on those early, please. Uh, we need more D&D &D tributes. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I do a bunch of them because clearly I love Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you won't see, you'll never see full on D&D &D tributes in the line. Um, you will possibly see parts spread across different figures that if you put them together, you could kind of make a representation of a D&D &D character or one of those classic characters. Uh, yeah, saying this new line of gladiator figures are really giving Mythic Legions a run for their money. I've intentionally stayed away from them. Um, I saw some quality, I saw some people reporting quality issues early on. Um, and then I've seen other people that say they absolutely love them. So I, I, to me, it's maybe just the ones you get. Obviously, there's always a potential to get a couple duds. Um, for me, the reason I stayed away is because of this. I, I, have, I don't have room for Mythic Legions. I sell a bunch of my Mythic Legions customs because I need more room to put new customs in. So I've intentionally tried to avoid getting into new lines while those figures may look really well with Mythic Legions. I have a number of Mythic Legions gladiators that wasn't that wasn't an itch that I felt that I needed to scratch. But I have heard really good things. Yep. I ordered Archimedes and Kurzog on the recent in stock. Two wonderful figures. Um, I mean, I I mentioned that the Ogre Legion Builder is a great value at fifty dollars. Kurzog is is personally my favorite of those ogres um this uses a kurzog body um i obviously like the paint detail i like the bare feet too so that's why i used kurzog when i painted that up yeah so people talking about those yeah i do i i need a bigger space to display all this and i'm i'm when the next legion lines comes out i'm don't know what i'm gonna do there but that is a good problem to have for another day. Um, so with that, I think I'm going to call it an evening. It is now 9.09. .09. We've had a really, really good conversation tonight. Um, interesting. I, 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 
I've been happy to see the viewer count continue to climb. And it seems like people are sticking with me. More and more people are checking this out. Um, but help me spread the word. Help me spread the word. If, if you if you know other collectors that are into Mythic Legions that aren't checking out the show, whether they're not checking it out live or on replay, um, let them know about it. Stuff like that helps. Um, have them subscribe. You know, more subscribers absolutely helps me out. You know, give me some comments. If, if there's something you want to talk about, shoot me a comment. Shoot me some likes in the videos, whether it's Mythic Conversations or the short tutorial videos that I do. I usually, I'm going to try to post those on weekends to kind of spread them out from what we do here. Um, so that's really helpful. Uh, I love doing this. I'm going to keep doing it and I will see you in subsequent weeks. We have a lot of fun stuff to talk about, including in a couple weeks, those guys that I had to pull out of that case over there. Thank you for that. Once again, Drew, thank you for, I'm, I'm curious if people are going to go back and screen cap it and try to, you know, make it bigger so they can see some of that stuff that was there. We will see. So as Drew likes to say every week, I will see you next week. The same mythic time, same mythic channel. Until then, I'll talk to you soon.